Hi everyone, thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I'll be talking about osmotic demyelination syndrome. Let me quickly you know, introduce you to the key as for this presentation. Everything around osmotic demyelination syndrome or formerly known as central point amyelolysis is about treatment of chronic hyponatremia too rapidly. And that's why we come down with the problem. So the key here, the major preventive measure here is no rapid correction. Why that? Chronic hyponatremia will have gained some level of adaptation. And then when we we'll correct too rapidly, beyond four to six mini equivalent per liter per day of sodium, we will tilt the patient into a big trouble. And that is osmotic demyelination syndrome. So you can follow me now to know everything about osmotic demyelination syndrome, including clinical features, how to make the diagnosis, and of course, we'll come back to the preventive measure, which is no rapid correction of hyponatremia, particularly chronic hyponatremia. Osmotic demyelination syndrome was formerly known as central point myelinolysis. The sodium level determines the tonicity of extracellular fluid. Decreased sodium would then mean hypotonic ECL, meaning we are dealing with hypotonic hyponatremia. Hence, water will enter the brain and will be battling with cerebral edema. Then, the brain will develop adaptive measures to the volume changes in the cerebral hemisphere. If there is rapid corrosion of the aponatremia, that will lead to alteration in the adaptation above. And we'll be dealing with neurological symptoms following the rapid correction. And that is collectively called osmotic demyelination syndrome formerly known as central pontine myelinolysis. So what happens? Let's look at the brain and hyponatremia. When there is a fall in the level of sodium, then we have fall in tonicity of ECL. So there's increased water in the brain. There's increased swelling of the astrocytes. The astrocytes are surrounding the brain capillaries. The astrocytes will have the capability to express water through water channels on their food processes. So neurons are protected from swelling via a cell-to-cell -cell transfer of cellular solutes and water. Within two days, the brain would have adapted to the apotonicity. So that informed you know, the reason why correction of aponatremia and chronic aponatremia very rapidly is the cause of osmotic demyelination syndrome. Because within two days, adaptation would have occurred. Increase in the cranial pressure following a drop in sodium will force sodium and water from the interstitium out of the brain into cerebral spinal fluid. Astrocytes would then lose potassium from the intracellular compartment along with osmolize and thereby shedding excess water and have the same tonicity as plasma without necessarily increasing water in the cell. Still dealing with the brain and the, how the brain is happening aponatremia, right? Chronic aponatremia will pose less problem as per seizures, coma, or brain herniation. 
The problem is that the overzealous correction can be the huge problem as per osmotic demyelination syndrome and chronic hyponatremia. Why that? Because they've adapted to the environment. Okay? So, rapid cor correction will have less osmotic demyelination syndrome problems listing, listing place in acute hyponatremia. So, in acute hyponatremia, if you correct rapidly, that's not good, but you, you have less risk of osmotic demyelination syndrome. And why that? Because they are still undergoing adaptation at that time. They have not you know, fully adapted to aponeutremic condition. But that is not the same with chronic aponeutremia. Pathogenesis. Well, in medicine, we we'll always find another level when we can't find our way out. And that is, we don't know. And I would say causes, we call it idiopathic, or not completely understood, or we don't even know. And that is the truth. So here, it is not completely known. But there are certain hypotheses that are reasonable, that chronic aponeutremia is associated with loss of osmolites. And the osmolites there will be myoanacetol, glutamine, glutamine from astrocytes. So there will be loss of that. And that will be providing protection against brain cell swelling. Okay? Increased sodium will lead to cell shrinking faster than the rate at which the osmolites could be replaced. So direct injury to astrocytes and oligodendrocytes will be detrimental to normal myelination and remyelination after the injury. And of course, will be detrimental to the maintenance of blood-brain barrier. So, with all that I've just said, the abrupt changes will then lead to protein aggregation, DNA fragmentation, and induced markers of programmed cell death. Within one day, the cells, meaning the astrocytes and oligodendrocytes, will begin to die where there is no myelination. Meaning, they begin to die where demyelination has occurred. So, there will be destruction of the blood-brain barrier. There will be increased cytokines and activation of microglia cells. What are the possible risk factors? Sodium level 120 million equivalent per liter or less is a big risk factor. Chronic aponeutremia, like I've explained in the previous slides, and mostly when the sodium level is less than 105 million equivalent per liter, that's a big risk factor. Severe liver disease with increased sodium after transplantation, diabetes insipidus, malnourished individuals. End stage renal disease with immunodialysis, alcoholism, for example, beer, photomania, too rapid rate of correction in chronic hyponatremia. The normal rate should be between 4 to 6 mL equivalent per liter per day of sodium correction. Apokalemia concomitantly would decrease sodium. Adding more apatonic saline or solutes and certain interventions in the phase of autocorrection of aponatremia will give us osmotic demyelination syndrome. And what are the examples there? We have adrenal insufficiency, right? And then we are battling with SIADH and we are giving glucocorticoids to the patient, which is the right thing to do, right? With time, we might be dealing with ODS.
when we know that certain medications are causing SIADH and we discontinue those medications, we should remember that once we have discontinued those medications, the SIADH will be correcting itself. Okay? And there is a restoration of volume in someone with volume depletion. Mm -hmm. Then we should know that that will suppress the release of ADH with half life of 15 to 20 minutes, and then there will be excretion of the excess wall. When we know that tarzide is responsible and we have discontinued the tarzide, we should remember that will be auto you know, correction of SIADH here. When we choose to use the suppressive receptor antagonist, or we are dealing with transient SIADH that could be resolved. No, transient is just transient, that is just English word. It's not for a long period of time, okay? And on its own, it has resolved. For example, surgical stress, now the patient is out of the surgery, recovering, recuperating well, and then as I did, has corrected itself. Or somebody is having nausea, the nausea has been stopped, thanks to whatever agent you've chosen, okay? Pneumonia, either community acquired or whatever, or nosocomia, being treated with your good antibiotics, and SIDH is being corrected, you no? Know, just like that. Okay, what are the possible clinical features in uh, osmotic demyelination syndrome? In pontine injury, there will be abnormal speech at the onset. The early part will be characterized with abnormal speech. Okay? And that abnormal speech will persist. Then, the individual will become mute. In corticospinal injury, there will be hyperreflexia and positive Babinski sign. In corticobulba injury, there will be brisk jaw jack. Dysphagia may lead to aspiration pneumonitis or aspiration pneumonia. And if there is no, no appropriate intervention on time, we might end up with respiratory failure. Still on clinical features, there's likelihood of increased muscular tone, known as apatonia, facial weakness, and primitive reflexes like snort, grabs, and routine reflexes. In extrapontine features, we might be dealing with psychiatric disturbances, catatonia, postural limb tremor, myocloning jacks, Parkinsonia-like presentation, chorioatitosis, dystonia. All this will respond to dopaminergic agent. In two to six days after correction of the hyponatremia, we can then be faced with dysatria, dysphagia, paraparesis, cardioparesis, behavioral disturbances, movement disorders. We could also be faced with seizures, lethargy, confusion, disorientation, obtundation, coma, death, or permanent neurological damage. And the patient could be left in locked in situation, meaning he or she is awake, but can't move and can't talk. How do we make the diagnosis of ODS? Thorough history, you know, history of aponeutremia or symptoms of aponeutremia, history of treatment for aponeutremia or aponeutremia that has occurred 
now two or three days before which means chronic aponeutremia now taking treatment and the treatment was done very fast soon enough to tilt the patient to ODS. then we have physical examination done now just go over you know this presentation before now check everything again no auto signs no check out the magnetic resonance imaging is the best in our investigation to do if your center is rich enough to have one then CT scan could be done and of course you can add to large to after psychological screening done complete blood count sodium potassium calcium pH glucose renal function test thyroid function test liver function test ACT stimulation test and so on get all these things done then prevention that is the key in fact this entire presentation could be centered around prevention of ODS because it is better that it does not occur we have to go over this presentation again and check the risk factors make sure we have all the risk factors you know, corrected or handled appropriately and then the best the best the best clear you know definition of prevention here is no rapid correction of hyponatremia i repeat no rapid correction or no too fast correction of hyponatremia particularly in chronic hyponatremia we expect the correction to be between four to six milli equivalent per liter per day please we don't want i'm sorry i was over zealous it was inadvertent or whatever then we we'll put the patient in trouble either they are dead or they are locked in steps no be kind be calm be collective with that i've come to the end of this presentation remember to give thumbs up remember to pass a comment Remember to share it and remember to subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.